Now let's look at a numerical example for 2D rectangular components where we're asked to determine the magnitude of the resultant of two forces that are added together and the angle that this resultant makes if we measure it from the x-axis. And if this problem looks familiar, it's the same problem I used when we, we were using the parallelogram law. I want to show you that we, we are going to get the same answer and this way is a lot easier to do than the parallelogram law. So first thing we need to do when we're working with 2D rectangular components, we need to determine positive directions. And we need to do this for both of our axes. So we're using XY coordinate system so my positive x direction I'm going to say is to the right. My positive y direction I'm going to say is up. So now I have a positive x and a positive y direction. My second step, I need to resolve all vectors so they are along the x and y axes, uh, so x and y directions. So let's look at the two forces I have right here. I have F1, which is in the x and y plane, so I'm going to need to resolve that. And I have F2, which is only along the x axis, so that is already in a good form. That already is only with the x components. Now let's draw this a little bigger. Let's draw my y and my x axis. Let's make them dashed so I don't confuse them with vectors and let's draw down let's draw this 80 pound vector. And I'm going to do a couple of steps like this uh, that I probably wouldn't do if I was solving this problem myself. Uh, I, you know, writing out each of uh, these individually, I would just probably do it on this diagram, but I don't want to get it too crowded for this. What we need to do is we need to look at how can we break this up? Well, we can make a triangle. If we make a triangle, we'll need to know what this angle is, what this angle right here is. And we know what that angle is, right? We know that this angle between F1 and F2 is 120 degrees, so let's call this theta. We know that theta is going to be equal to this 120 degrees and we're going to subtract out this 90 degrees because that's the angle between x and y. So this is going to be 120 minus 90 and we get that this is equal to 30 degrees. So this angle right in here is 30. Well that's good because when we resolve this we need to get something along the y-axis this will be my, uh, let's not use arrows, let's just say this is my F1, Y. And I need to get something along the X axis. This right here is my F1, X. And I have a triangle. So with this triangle, I can use Sakatoa. In this 30 degree triangle, let's identify the, the opposite side and the adjacent side. So if I go from this angle, my opposite side is what this intersects. It's this uh, F1x. And my adjacent side is what's touching this angle. So it's F1y. If I write, if I just want to get the magnitude, the number of what F1y is, F1y is going to be, we know that this F1 is 80. So let me put 80. F1y is going to be 80 and I forgot the, I wrote Sakatoa wrong. I forgot the H. But F1Y is the adjacent in the hypotenuse. We're going to need to use the cosine. So it's going to be 80 times the cosine of 30. F1X is going to be 80 
Well, we're on the opposite side, so it's going to be the sine. So the sine of 30. This will come to a 40. And this will be, I forget what it was. Uh, this would be 80 times the cosine of 30. Uh, 69.3. If you're using the calculator, be careful that you are using the calculator in degrees and you're not using the calculator in radians. Uh, so 69.3. So this, these are magnitudes. These are not vectors. The vector part is that arrow. These are just telling me how long these vectors are. So this is equal to 69.3. This is equal to 40. We need them to be vectors and we need to take into account the direction they're pointing for the next part. We need to, for, e, for the x, we need to gather our x components and we need to gather our y components. So we need to gather x components and we need to gather y components x components are going to be in the i direction y components are going to be in the j direction okay so my force my total force uh let's say my force my resultant force is going to be equal to, let's gather the x direction first. Well, with F1, I have this 40, but this 40 is pointing to the left, and I had said that the positive direction is to the right, right? This arrow points to the left. I said my positive direction is to the right, so I am going to need to subtract 40. Okay, what about F2? F2 it has an x component of 60. So I'm going to add 60. Let me not use different color parentheses. And that's going to be my i component of my resultant force. Next, I am going to need to add in my j component. My j component, my f1 is 69.3. It's pointing up, so it's positive. So let's do 69.3. And my F2 does not have a Y component. It's only along the X axis, so it's a zero. I'm not gonna write that in. So this will be a J component. Let's add these together. This is going to be equal to minus 40 plus 60 is 20 I. I'm not going to change colors. I'm just going to write it in one color. 20i plus 69.3j. And what does this physically represent? This represents my resultant force goes over 20i. So it goes over this way. This is 20. 20 in the i, it's positive. And it goes up 69.3. in the J. So if I connect that, this is my resultant force right here. If I wanted to get the magnitude, I would say the magnitude of my resultant force is equal to, remember it's the square root of 20 squared plus 69.3 squared. So it's going to be 72.1, and that's pounds. And then I can figure out what this angle is, and this is why it's always good to graph it. So if I graph this, I can figure out what this angle, I'm not going to call it theta, we'll call it, we'll call it alpha. I know that alpha, 
Well, this is my opposite. This is my adjacent. So I can say alpha by using Sakatoa. Alpha is the inverse tangent of opposite 69.3 over adjacent, which is 20. And the inverse tangent of 69.3 divided by 20 is 73.9 degrees. So this is equals 73.9 degrees. So my final answer would be this. My my result my resultant is 72.1 pounds at 73.9 degrees up from the horizontal uh, axis. Now your instructor might want you to write it in terms of, I think I might have gone off the screen a little, but your instructor might want you to write it in terms of a vector form, which would be this, or a magnitude and an angle, which would be this one. And there's only one more thing I want to say in this video. You should get comfortable understanding that sine and cosine are not fixed to the x and the y axis. They're fixed to the angle that you're looking for. So in this case, when I was breaking these up into components, this is my angle I'm looking at, 30 degrees. This opposite of 30 degrees is this x component. If you really don't like x components having signs, you would have needed to figure out, okay, this angle right in here is 60 degrees. Now, the equivalent expression, I'm going to write this above, for my F1y is going to be 80 times the sine of 60 and 80 times the cosine of 60. If I go to the calculator and I say that 80 sine of 60, I'm going to get 69.3. So they're equal. It, you just need to get comfortable with the fact that X does not mean cosine, sine does not mean uh, Y. And when you get comfortable with that, you won't need to take this extra step and make this uh, a 60 degrees. So you should try, try to feel comfortable um, with, what, with all the steps that I took in this problem.